Hello, I'm David Broadhead and welcome to the business programme on Kirkley's Local TV where we intend to inform, educate and even entertain you about current business issues here in Kirkley's. Today's guest is Charles Brook, partner at Poppleton and Appleby, business recovery and insolvency practitioners based in Huddersfield and Manchester. Charles, thanks for joining us today. Woolworths, BHS, Monarch and in the last few weeks Carillion are all well-known big businesses that have literally hit the rocks financially in recent years. Do you expect to see more businesses, particularly smaller and local ones, struggling in 2018? And if so, why? Well, thanks for inviting me along, David. It's an interesting question. It's one that the industry at large is thinking about because it's where, how we make our money, if we're being really honest about it. Um, these things come around in cycles. Um, Carillion's failure is probably symptomatic of the economic cycle. Um, there will be others, there will be others in the next cycle um, and there are likely to be additional fallouts as a result of the Carillion collapse in itself because it's a big company, lots of people rely on it, not just the employees who've been affected but obviously lots and lots of subcontractors and the employees of those subcontractors. Um, I think it's likely as the economy improves, as it is improving, that there will be more failures. Whether they'll be as significant as that is hard to say. Um, we could almost say that the Carillion is the Lehman Brothers moment for the construction industry, if you like. We've recognised that through that event, perhaps the way that government contracting is done is not correctly handled. I think the government have accepted that. It's not a political point. Um, and a different way of operating is required to kind of avoid those sort of things in the future. It might be symptomatic of the way the industry is operating rather than symptomatic of the economy. OK. So... Puppleton and Appleby, how can you help those local businesses that may or may not have financial difficulties, often through no direct fault of their own, maybe due to a customer collapsing like Carillion, say? How, how can they deal with that situation? Well, the first thing is talking to the creditors. Um, I think a lot of people tend to bury their head in the sand when they get into a difficult financial situation. Yeah. Um, financial problems generally aren't caused by poor financial management. They're caused by some catastrophe that's affected the business that causes a, a shortage in supply of money, it's putting it simply. Um, it could be everything from losing a key customer um, to having a failure of supply um, or quite simply illness. Uh, and an awful lot of businesses suffer through that. The smaller the business, the less resilient it will be to these sort of things happening. Uh, Popton and Appleby, what we try to do is work with small to medium-sized enterprises. I think traditionally we call them micro and medium-sized businesses these yeah. days. Um, Unmanaged businesses where they don't necessarily have the experience of handling those sort of situations. And we act as, I like to call it a, a, a shock absorber, really. Okay. Um, if somebody comes to me, the first thing I try to do is to help them appreciate the scale of the problem isn't necessarily as big as they think it is. Um, we try to put the problem to one side, find out what they were trying to do with the business when they first came along. In fact, put them in a, a better place mentally, first of all. Okay we can then address the problem, bring it back to the discussion and help them see a way forward with that. And we can, sometimes we can solve it, sometimes we can't. The aim of the, the game is effectively is to help them to resolve the problem. Um, if the problem's not capable of being resolved, then you've got to recognise that it's their future. It's yeah. the future of their employees and people who rely on that business, whether it's their suppliers, their creditors in general, or even their customers. Um, so you always try to find a way forward that means that that business in some way, shape or form can continue or those individuals can at least have a livelihood moving forward. Exactly. Um, very, very few people plan to fail. Yeah. So a quick question for my benefit, if nobody else's, can you explain the difference between administration and insolvency? Yeah, well, insolvency is effectively a condition. Um, administration is a process for dealing with a condition. It's one of many uh, processes that we can introduce. It's the one that most of us hear about if we hear about large companies going to administration uh, and they do tend to be the larger ones um, then it's a controlled managed procedure for dealing with the insolvency. Okay. Um, we hear of liquidations as well that's another process. Um, voluntary arrangements are another way of dealing with it as well. Uh, insolvency really is any situation where you have a cash crisis or where there are insufficient assets to be able to meet all the liabilities of the business. Okay. 
So we've talked about business issues. Do you also help people with personal financial difficulties? We do. Um, as a firm, we don't generally do what we call consumer work. Um, there are some special agencies who are qualified to do that, are regulated to do that, and are better suited to do that sort of thing. Um, so there are people like Step Change, for example, which is a, a charity which can assist individuals who get into things like credit card debt, difficulty with their mortgage, and so on and so forth. We, however, tend to deal with the personal insolvency of company directors and people associated with companies. So if company directors find themselves in difficulty as a result of the failure of their business, uh, perhaps facing uh, liabilities to creditors as a result of personal guarantees, or perhaps they've actually been fi financing the business themselves, and the failure of the business means they can't recover that money. Yep. Um, then we tend to step in in that situation, because that's more of a commercial circumstance that we're dealing with. Um, and usually the objective is to try and put them in a position where they can start to earn money again. They can start to contribute to the economy again, which is what we need. We need business owners yep. who make those commitments. Um, and help creditors to get some money back, essentially. Uh, and that's, I suppose, is what we all want. Excellent. So to me, it sounds like a fascinating profession to be in, given the breadth and depth of companies you're working in and the people that you must meet. So how did you become what you are today? And mm -hmm. how might someone thinking of this as a career start and progress? Most people fall into insolvency by accident, um, okay. as a career, that is. Um, many fall into insolvency by accident in any other shape or form as well, but as a career, it generally draws people in who want an exciting challenge on a daily basis. Traditionally, it would have been a profession for accountants. Um, they'd go through an audit process, they'd be trainee accountants, they'd get into auditing, they'd be seconded into a, an insolvency team for a day or two and suddenly so go, this is exciting. Um, my career started as a lawyer. And then I spent some time in industry, some time in local authority. And with the financial collapse of the mid-90s, I realised there was more fun on the other side of the coin okay. doing insolvency work. Yep. Um, I often describe it as the experience similar to being a child, visiting your cousin who's got all the best toys, playing with those best toys, but not having to put them away at the end of the day. <laughs> That's all for this week. Once more, I'd like to thank Charles Brook of Poppleton and Appleby for sharing his thoughts and experience with us. And I look forward to seeing you next time here on the business programme on Kirkley's local TV. Goodbye.